If you've been trading for a while, you may have had to reassess your current position. If so, you may have thought about changing the way you operate in order to improve performance. Watching this video will give you ideas about the things you can do to make your business more effective. Before looking at these, let's go back to the beginning and your original business plan. It's a good idea to read back through it and think about some of the issues it covers. For example, how can I improve share in my current target market? What new markets are there? And what could I do to break into those markets? What about your competitors? How are they changing their businesses? And your customers? How much do you know about what they think of your products or services? What about technology? What new equipment or software could you be using? Answering these questions should give you some idea about how you need to go about changing your business. So what exactly are the options for improving the way your organisation operates? Well, there are broadly three areas. Personnel, infrastructure and strategy. Let's look at each one in turn. First, personnel. If you need to grow your business, you may well need more people working for you. These could be regular employees, even if only part-time ones, or people employed for a fixed term. Or they could be contractors or consultants who have specialist skills that you're going to need only for a relatively short period of time. You could even take on agency workers to do a variety of tasks throughout your business. And don't forget to consider changing or adding to the people at the top, such as a new director or additional partner. But what if you think you can't afford additional people at the moment? Well, there's always improving the way existing staff work, and that includes you. This can be done quite simply. For example, you could set up a suggestion program. Acting on suggestions helps staff feel more involved in decision making, so they become more engaged and therefore more productive. However, you might also want to consider training to make them better salespeople or users of technology, for example. As for your own training, look at your strengths and weaknesses as a business owner or manager. If your business is going to grow, perhaps you'll need to learn how to delegate tasks or manage a team. There are plenty of training courses available through, for example, specialist training organisations or as a member benefit for trade or professional organisations. But you can improve your skills in less formal ways. Have you ever considered having a business mentor? This is usually someone who's also in business who can offer you advice or guidance. As well as giving you tips based on their own business experience, mentors can give you valuable feedback on your own ideas. So that's personnel. What about infrastructure? Think about your workplace. If you currently work out of a small office with a minimal amount of storage space for stock, selling more goods or having more staff will mean you're going to have to look to adapt your premises at the very least. Or perhaps you want to buy in new, bigger equipment or machinery. It should make your business more efficient, but it'll probably require more space, power and people to operate. The only option may be to move elsewhere. What about your IT systems? Like your premises, if your business is going to expand, your information and communications technology is going to have to expand too. This could be anything from a handful of new desktop PCs to a total system upgrade to improve network capacity and allow for more data storage. And that's just the hardware. You might also need, for example, better accounting or new payroll software. If all this seems like too big an investment for now, you could try cloud computing. This is where documents, emails, databases and applications are all stored remotely but remain accessible to your staff over the internet. Okay, 
we've covered people and infrastructure. So let's now turn to our final area, strategy. What do we mean by strategy? Well, we could sum it up as finding ways to grow your business by improving how you source or produce the goods or services you sell, improving on the quality or range of things you sell, and improving how you actually sell them. Because all these will help you to sell more of your product or services to customers. First, take a look at your suppliers. Ask yourself whether or not they're actually offering you the best deal. You could try negotiating a better price, particularly if there's a strong chance you'll be giving them more business in future. It's not just about price though. What about the quality of their service? If it's not up to scratch, consider putting together a service level agreement if you haven't already got one. But at the end of the day, if you don't think you're getting value for money from a supplier, don't be afraid to look for a replacement. As for how you go about producing your goods or services, take a good look at your existing processes. You may find that work is duplicated or not done as efficiently as it could be. If so, you need to revise these processes or even replace them altogether. What if you think that you need to improve the quality or range of things you currently sell? This could be just slightly changing the design of a product or scope of a service. However, it could be selling complementary or related products or services, or even developing entirely new products or services. This last option might even mean partnering with another organization even if it's a competitor or supplier, to see that your new offering gets off the ground. Taking the joint venturing approach is quite a big step, so it pays to tread carefully. Start off your research by looking at the guidance available on our website. This last one could be quite a radical step, especially if you'd end up selling into new markets and alongside new competitors. Whatever improvements you make to the quality and range of your goods or services, thorough planning is important. You need to be as confident as you can be that it's worth taking the risks involved. Finally, take a good hard look at how you sell to your customers. This means assessing your sales and marketing techniques and the quality of your customer service. However, even though you might think you already know this, you should look again at who your customers are and what expectations they have, as these will have changed over time. So for individuals, you'll need to know about their age, gender, income and so on, and for businesses, what industry they operate in and their size. You should also try to find out what they like and dislike about your products or services and why they choose to use you. Having the latest information on your customers should help you to refocus your marketing on those you think are the most valuable. So, working better means taking a detailed look at personnel, infrastructure and strategy. And once you've started working better, don't forget to review your progress to ensure you're sticking to your plans.